So here are the rules then. Uh, when you, whenever you have a problem that asks for the total area between a curve and the x-axis, if you see that terminology given to you, then you have to follow this procedure. You can't just set up a simple integral and calculate all the way across. You have to actually break it up. So first, you're going to break up the original interval based on the zeros. So you want to find out where it crosses the x-axis because that's where it's going to be splitting up whether it's positive or negative areas. So we subdivide that uh, at the zeros. We're going to integrate f over each of the intervals. So if we go from a to c and then from c to b, for instance, we're going to integrate both of those, but we're adding the absolute value of each of the integrals for those. That's what actually allows you to get a positive answer and it doesn't cancel out and give you a zero. So you have to consider a positive and a negative. We're doing that separately. Whenever it asks for total area between the graph, it wants the total sum of those two areas. So we're ignoring the fact even though it's below the x-axis, we're saying that because we're doing an absolute value, it's technically going to make that area positive. Okay, so, this, so whenever you see that total area, these are the procedures that you have to follow. Okay, so in the previous video, I talked about the three steps that you got to do if you see a problem written. This is the total area between a graph and the x-axis. So if you see that word total area, special procedure we have to follow. The first procedure is we need to know how to break up this interval. So we want to find out what the subinterval is, and that's going to involve setting it equal to zero because that's where it splits up the positive and negative areas. Okay, so we're going to set this equal to zero. Zero equals this whole thing here. Now to solve that we're going to do some factoring. Take on x, x squared minus x minus 2. And then this one inside can be factored one more time. And so you're going to get inside here, uh, you get 1 and 2 for each of those. And you're going to get a minus and a plus here to get the negative there uh, as a result. So we get all this and then you're going to set each one of those equal to 0. You're going to get x is equal to 0, negative 1, and 2. Now, of course, you'll get negative 1 and 2 because that's the original endpoints of the interval, but we also have a 0 on this one. So now we know how to split up our interval. We're going to go from negative 1 to 0, and then we're going to go from 0 to 2 to get us the total area all the way across. We have to do this process because it says the word total area, and that's how we do these. So first, we're going to, let's set up the interval. We're going to do absolute value. We're going to do the interval from, we said from negative 1 to 0, x cubed minus x squared minus 2 dx. And then absolute value there, plus with another one, we're going to go from 0 to 2, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x dx. So this right here would be how you're going to set up that particular interval. We do both of these with absolute values, so that way we get a positive area as a result. So let's do each one of these individually. First, we're going to take the antiderivative of this one, x to the fourth over 4 minus x cubed over 3, 2x squared over 2. That's going to be your antiderivative. Raise the power by 1, divide by the new power. And what we can do here is because I got 2 over 2, I'm going to simplify that. Those cancel out. And so this will be your antiderivative. We're going to go between negative 1 and 0. So we're going to do this whole thing first, then we'll put that in here for that one, and then we'll do the other one. First we'll put 0 in. Okay, now, you don't have to necessarily write all this out because if I put 0 in for all these, that's going to give me a 0 for the entire first part. So I'll get 0, 0, and 0. If you know all that's going to end up being 0, then you can just go ahead and just put a big 0 there. You don't have to actually show the 0 into each of those individual pieces. Now let's put negative 1 in. Negative 1 to the fourth over 4 minus negative 1 cubed over 3 minus negative 1 squared. Okay, so because the minus sign's on the outside, we're going to first figure all this out and then we'll apply the minus sign to it. Okay, so I have a minus sign and then inside here, I'm going to get positive 1 fourth. This is negative, I get, because I'm raising it to a cube, but I have a negative on the outside. Make it positive. And then this here is positive, but I'm subtracting 1 from it. Okay, and so when I do that part, I get negative out front. I have a 1 fourth. If I subtract these two, I'll get minus 2 thirds. And you can get some common denominators on that. Multiply this by 3 over 3 and 4 over 4, so you get 3 minus 8. You get negative 5 twelfths here. 
because of double negatives, you'll get a positive 5 twelfths, which means that I'm going to put a 5 twelfths in right here as my first integral. So I've worked through the whole thing. We're going to work all of it through, and we're again, it's got to be absolute value around that. So that's the first one. Now we have to do the whole thing for the second one. So I have my same antiderivative. So hopefully you have all this already. And I'm going to erase this, and now we'll, we'll do 0 to 2. Let's put 2 into all those, 2 to the 4th over 4, 2 cubed over 3, minus 2 squared. And then minus, if I put 0 in for all those, that's another one I mentioned before. If you know it's all going to be zeros, you can just put 0 afterwards. So essentially all we have to do is calculate this part here. 16 over 4 is 4, minus 8 thirds, minus 4 there. The two fours are going to cancel out and we get the absolute value of negative eight thirds. It's gonna go inside there. But the absolute value always gives you a positive number as a result. So you get five twelfths plus eight thirds as your answer. You get some common denominators, four over four, you'll get 32 plus five. It's gonna give you 37 twelfths as your answer. I have a graph of this that's in the notes, so you can take a look at it to see visually what's happening. Now, whenever you split it up by using total area, you're not always going to get the two areas to cancel out. In this case, you got a 5 twelfths and an 8 thirds, and normally you would have subtracted these if you wouldn't have done it this way and separated it and just done the big integral all the way from negative 1 to 2. You wouldn't have gotten the right answer here because it's asking specifically for total area, which means they want you to treat all those as separate areas you're going to add together regardless of whether it's above the graph or below the graph, above or below the x-axis I should say. So this would be the total area if you add all those together. Again, if you look at the graph in the, in the book, you'll see visually that you're just adding the one from the top and the one down below to get you the total area 37 twelfths.